Hello, 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 everyone, and welcome to day eight of 31 Days of Halloween. I am Teresa, and I love sharing art from my heart and teaching you how to create a little joy in your life through some fun, simple, and quick art projects. So, what is this? It's a brick. It's heavy like a brick, too. Um, I have already base coated it white. You can grab the supply list for this project in the comments. Um, and I'm going to turn you guys around, and we're going to get started. Okay, so I have out this brick. We are making a book of it, for it, with it, um, with a Halloween theme. So I have out some white. I'm going to put out a little bit of this Bahama blue, a little bit of dark blue, and a little bit of black. My goal is to eventually make this book look a little um, old and grungy. We'll see if I succeed. If not, it's going to be a cool project anyway. All right. I'm going to get out a nasty brush because I'm painting on a brick. I'm not going to use one of my good brushes to paint on a brick. Okay. So I have put out some true blue, some Bahama blue, and some black. Oh, I'm going to need some white too. Let me get some white. Okay, I hear some kind of motor running outside. I don't know what that is. Okay, so we're going to make this into a book. Who is a fan of um, Edgar Allan Poe? Anyone? So I'm picking up the Bahama blue and the white. Now I'm going to come over here and pick up a little bit of the dark blue. And I'm just going to just start painting this in here. I'm not using a good brush. It's a brush that I use for backgrounds because it's a brick. This is going to, you know, take a toll on my brush. And we don't want that. So this way I can get in all the nooks and crannies. If I end up throwing out this brush, that's okay too. All right. So I'm using my brush and I'm squishing it down. And we're going to paint in. I might, I guess I could do the back with you guys. I'm going to do the, the binder now. So I thought this would be a fun project for our 31 days of Halloween. How are you guys doing? How's everybody doing? The fact that this brick is old um, and came from I don't know where already makes it look like an old book. It's not perfect. Um, there's ridges and divots. So that's pretty good already for the effect that we're going for. And I just keep picking up both colors on my brush. I added in a little bit of the dark blue just to have a little bit of some shading. And I want to get in all the nooks and crannies. I'm going to pick up a little bit more of this dark blue. Okay, I'm going to hit this with the dryer a little bit because this is the back of my brick and I want it to um, be dry before I start laying it around. Okay. I'm not really concerned about the back. I do want it dry, but I'm mostly going to be worried about um, the other sides. The other, what is it? How many sides to a brick? Eight. So the other six sides. One, two, three, four, five sides. So the six sides, so five sides. All right, I'm going to dry this up really well. This way I can lay it down and move on. I use my heat gun for that, and it doesn't take that long. All right, so let's go back to the binder, take a little bit of the blue. Mm. Get in all there and the crannies. And now I'm just gonna pick up a little bit of the black. I'm gonna wipe it off and I'm just gonna dirty this up a little bit. 
I'm going to make it a little bit darker up there, a little bit darker here, a little bit darker on the bottom. So I'm picking up the black, I'm wiping it off, and then I'm just coming up here and pulling in a little bit of black, dip in the side, wipe it off, and then pull a little bit of black down from the top and now the edge. Okay, and we did that side. Now I'm gonna wipe off my brush. I don't need to go into the water right now. Get out a little bit more of this patina. It's, uh, what is it? It's Bahama Blue, but it looks just like the folk art patina. Hey, Jerry, sprinkle them out. Thank you, thank you kindly. We're working on a book tonight for Halloween. I'm gonna get some white. Just wanna get in all these nooks and crannies. Okay, and you can make your book pretty much any color you want. I was actually gonna make it black, um, but then I was like, you know what? I know I'm doing Halloween and stuff, but why does, not everything has to be black for Halloween. And then I'm gonna put the design on here, so I thought we were good. All right, I'm going to grab a little bit of black, wipe it off, and then just come up from the bottom, up from the bottom, grab a little bit of black, wipe it off my brush, and come down from the top. Grab a little bit, wipe it off, and do the edge. Okay. I'm going to wait to do that edge until I've done the pages. Okay. All right, so I'm going to wash my brush. Okay. Now, I've already base coated this white, but I'm going to give it another coat of white. Mm -hmm. Let me get out my white paint. Because I also want my white on my pages to be wet. So now presumably, this is the top of the book. And then this would be the side of the book where you open it. I base coated this brick white first before I even started. Okay. So am I going to be able to get to the bottom of this? The back is dry, right? I can get to the bottom of this. I'm just getting all in here. Okay. Now I'm going to get a different brush. I'm going to come in here and get my rake brush. Not a fan brush. My rake brush. You can make a rake brush if you don't have one or if you can't find one like me. I usually have it right in here. It's missing quite a bit of, um, oh, here it is. So a rake brush is missing quite a few hairs. So it only has, it's very thin up top. So can you see how most of it is thick, like a regular paintbrush, and then it gets thin? And when we use a rake brush, we use it with some water. So I'm gonna dip it in some water. And then I want black. So I'm gonna pick up some black. And see how my bristles are all separated like that? I want that because I'm gonna tip this up and I'm going to pull my rake brush across the bottom like it's pages of a book. Okay. 
Đấy. So I have my black. I think I'm going to pick up a little bit of white with this too. And now I'm just going to take it and I'm going to run a straight line. As straight as I can up and down the whole book. See how that gives the illusion now of those being pages? Very fine lines. Okay. And then I'm going to do the top. Pick up a little bit of white. I can go back and add some white to it later if I feel like I need to. I can add some white spots or some darker spots. And that's what we have so far. Okay, I'm going to put that down. I'm going to get out a medium round. I'm going to roll it in my blue. I'm going to pick this up. And now I want to make like the book cover. So I'm just going to come in here. And I'm making a thick blue line. on the top and the bottom of these sections. So I'm gonna roll it in there. This paint is kind of thick and this is becoming to look like the book cover. Okay. And we're going to do the top and the bottom and the sides. And, oops. I'm just going to leave it like that for now. Hopefully my back side was dry enough. If not, we're going to fix it. It's all good. All right. I'm going to take this. And I'm just going to make a thicker line right down the edge to make it look like my book cover. This kind is making it look like it's here and it's a little broken. So I might go with that. And then this side. I mean, it's supposed to look like an old book anyway, right? Okay, back over. All right, get in here a little bit. Oh, we're good down here. Okay. So that is the cover. This is the rest of my book. I have out this really cool raven. Which way should it face? Maybe it'll face this way to the front. Okay. And I'm going to open up my black chalk paint because, hello, 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 because I like using black chalk paint when I do stenciling. I like that it's thicker. The thicker the paint, the less bleeds. If you watched my video last night, I use a piece of press and seal up in my um, lid of my chalk paint because chalk paint bottles tend to get real nasty and ratty and hard to open. So, oh, actually, I don't even need this. So I have my stencil. I'm going to dab in my chalk paint and then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to dab it off. And I'm just going to come to my stencil and I'm going to start stenciling it in. 
So I'm going to pick up some paint. I'm going to dab it off, and I'm going to come here. Now, this is a stencil from Essential Stencil. You guys know I love Essential Stencil. If you want to hop over there, you can use the code Stencil Spot for 10% off. This is a six pack, a three pack, a six pack. This particular one, oh, wrong paint, is a six pack. Um, and these are actually six pack, a six by six. So the trick to stenciling is to pounce it off. You don't want a lot of paint. I really don't want a lot of paint too here because this is an old book. So I don't care if I get full coverage or not, if it's a little bit, um, left it's okay it doesn't have to be real dark but the trick to not having bleeds <gasps> is less paint the less paint the better so i will always pounce off my stencil brush okay I'll put my press and seal back on put my lid on top and we're good to go i'm gonna take a little tiny brush here because see because this is a stencil and on the stencil part, a stencil is what is called, has bridges. So the feet are connected. It could have been cut out in one big piece, but they didn't. So I'm just going to take this little brush. I'm going to come in here to the black paint. Actually, to my chalk paint. And I'm just going to dab in and I'm going to fill in these little spots. Because I didn't want them there on my book cover. So I just filled in those little bridges and connected his legs, okay? I'm going to grab my liner brush. I'm going to wet it and I'm gonna come over here and I'm just rolling it I thinned my paint a little bit, and I'm just rolling it in here in my liner paint. I'm going to come up here to the top of my book. You can use pencil for this if you want. I'm just going to go for it. Okay, I'm going to roll in. If you make a mistake, it's easy enough to fix. I'll just paint right over it. And I'm just carefully coming in here and putting in the title of the book. Okay. So there we have that. That's not all. We still have stuff to do. Okay. I'm going to roll this back a little bit. And this is where we have our pages. And I'm just going to get a little bit of black. A little bit. And add in some darker black lines here. Maybe where the book was a little dirty. It is an old book. A little bit of black line. Just to add some shading to that. Okay? I'm going to go back and do the same thing on the bottom. You can make a whole series for these. You can put these on your mantle. These can go in your garden. If you're going to put them outside in the garden, I would suggest um, spraying them. Okay. And now I'm going to lift up. Okay. So I'm going to get black. And I'm going to do a black line. In a black line, and I'm going to come down here, 
black line and a black line. If you want to use a ruler, if you want to measure, you can. It's up to you. Okay. I'll wash my brush. And I'm going to get a little bit of white. And I'm going to do the same thing with white. I'm going to get a little gold in my line of brush. I'll put a little bit of gold and a little bit of gold. And I'm going to, I don't know, should I do it in gold? I think I will. I want to do it in gold. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to put in the, the name. If you were so inclined, you could wait and do this all with a paint pen. As long as your paint is completely dry, you could do it with a paint pen. If you wanted to, again, I'm going to pick the middle here. If you wanted to, again, um, you could pencil these in first or chalk these in first. I'm just going for it. I like to start in the middle and then work my way to each side. I don't use a ruler, but that helps me keep things centered and where they need to be. Mm -hmm. So you can use a ruler if you want, or you can just eyeball it like I do. Totally up to you. Let's try. And I'm going to go back and get a little bit of black, and I'm going to add some black to my lettering. Not a lot, just a little. I'm not going to outline. Every letter, I'm just adding in a little shading. Keep picking up a little bit of paint. And I'm just adding a little bit of shading to the one side of each letter. Okay. And then I'm going to do the opposite here. So I'm going to take my gold and where I did the black on the gold on the side, here I'm doing the gold on the black. And I'm just doing it to one side and underneath. Ooh. And then I think I'm going to do a little bit to the raven.
This is 14 karat gold from Plaid. I love this paint. We can go around the whole raven if we want. But I think I'm going to leave it at that. Let's see. It's pretty dry. This came really cool, you guys. So this would be, I could put something on the back if I wanted to. I could bring these stripes around the back like they are on the side. That is the front. This is the side. You could even do this with a two by four if you want. It doesn't necessarily have to be an actual brick like I have it. But how cool is that? You can get the supply list. It is in the um, comments. And I think I think I love it. I think I could come in here. Where's my um, minor brush? Maybe we we'll draw a little bit of a branch down here. Make it a little bit thicker. There we go. Okay. So, thank you guys for watching me. Let me see if I can pick it up like I usually do. There we go. So, here is my garden brick book. This would be the side. And then here would be the pages. Top and bottom, and then the front with the binding.